In single rate three color placing, you have, well, three colors, allowing you to treat packets in one of three different ways. I like to use a driving analogy to explain this. Suppose you're driving to an appointment, a very important appointment, and you're running just a little late. You have three choices when it comes to how fast you can drive. If the speed limit is 45 miles per hour and you drive 45, you might be late for your appointment, but you will get there. Let's call this choice green or conforming since you're conforming to the speed limit. The second choice we'll call yellow. You drive 50 miles per hour, so you're technically speeding, but you likely won't get pulled over and you'll probably make it to your appointment on time. In three color policing, yellow is for packets that are exceeding, but still allowed. They are marked with a low priority DSCP value. Using the analogy, a cop might see you going 50 miles per hour on his radar gun, and he chooses not to pull you over, but he makes a mental note that you were speeding just a bit, so if he sees you speeding again, he might react differently. The third choice is red. You go 70 miles per hour, and you will definitely miss your appointment. You will either get pulled over or get into an accident. Either way, you won't make your appointment on time. Red packets are considered violating and are dropped like a bad habit. To understand how the committed burst or BC bucket works, suppose you set a CIR of 500,000 bits per second, just as before, but you make the BC bucket large enough to hold 750,000 tokens. The difference between the bucket size, 750,000, and the CIR, 500,000, is the committed burst size, or CBS. So 750,000 minus 500,000 is 250,000, hence the committed burst size is 250,000 bits, or to make it simple, 31,250 bytes. This means that even if there's 500,000 bits per second of sustained traffic, the policer will still allow an additional 31,250 bytes of data to burst forth. Now, to be clear, the BC bucket size is 750,000, but the committed burst size is 250,000 bits. Again, this is because 750,000, the size of the BC bucket, minus the CIR of 500,000, is 250,000. Did I mention this was confusing? The bottom line is that the committed burst size, or BC, is not the same size as the BC bucket. But the good thing is that the operation of the BC bucket is almost the same as in single rate two color policing. If you send a packet whose size is X bits, then X tokens come out of the BC bucket. The rate at which the tokens are refilled is based on the CIR, so in this case one token every one five hundred thousandth of a second. Now, let's contrast this with two-color policing. In three-color policing, you have a bigger bucket, so you can momentarily exceed the CIR. So, let's say the bucket is full of 750,000 tokens. This means you could send a 750,000-bit packet in one go, which of course would exceed the CIR of 500,000 bits per second. Again, this is called bursting. You're momentarily bursting beyond that CIR of 500,000 bits per second. Even though you're exceeding the CIR, the packet is still conforming because there are enough tokens in the BC bucket to cover it. However, once you send that packet, the tokens are gone, and you have to wait for more tokens to be added to the bucket before you can send more packets. Let's talk about the excess burst, or the BE bucket. To set the size of the BE bucket, you specify the excess burst size, or EBS, also known as just BE. If you specify an excess burst size of 125,000 bits, then the bucket can hold 125,000 tokens. Here's where the BE bucket comes into play. If the policer runs out of tokens in the BC bucket, it will then dip into the BE bucket. Any packets that cause the policer to dip into the BE bucket are called exceeding packets, and these are given a color of yellow. Typically, these exceeding packets are marked down with a low priority DSCP value and transmitted. However, if there are not enough tokens in the BE bucket to cover a packet, then the packet is considered violating and is dropped. Here's the topology we'll be working with. On R1, we'll configure a single rate three color policer for traffic ingressing gig 00. We'll generate some traffic from switch one and then verify that the policer works as configured. Let's jump over to R1. All right, 
configure terminal mode. Now the first thing we'll do is create a policy map. The policy map serves two purposes. It identifies the traffic we want to police and it is where we configure the parameters for the policer. The CIR, the BC or committed burst bucket size and the BE or excess burst bucket size. It's also where we can figure how the policer should treat conforming, exceeding, and violating packets. So we're going to do a policy dash map and we'll call this one ingress policy because we're original like that. Now we want the policer to police all traffic, so we'll configure it under the default traffic class. Class space class dash default. Next we'll configure the policer itself with a CIR of 500,000 bits. So police CIR 500,000. Now, if I hit the question mark here, it gives us an option for BC, conform burst. So we're going to go ahead and do BC 93,750 bytes. Packets covered by the tokens in the BC bucket will be conforming. In just a moment, we'll specify how those conforming packets are treated. But first, let's go ahead and hit question mark again and we get an option for BE, the excess burst. So we'll do BE 187,500. Again, notice that the BC and BE are specified in bytes, not bits. Packets that are covered by the tokens in the BC bucket are conforming, and we don't want to subject those packets to policing at all. So we'll do a conform dash action, and then another question mark here. And we get a ton of choices here. The ones that really stand out are drop and transmit. Obviously, we want to transmit the conforming packets. This causes the policer to just let those packets through. Now, packets that require dipping into the BE bucket, on the other hand, are exceeding. We still want to transmit these, but we're going to mark them with a low priority and a high drop probability. So let's do another question mark here. The exceed action specifies what happens to packets that require tokens from the BE bucket. We do exceed dash action. And then another question mark. In this case, we want to mark these exceeding packets with a DSCP value that gives them a high drop probability. So we'll do set DSCP dash transmit and we'll do AF 13. Now recall that the last digit in the assured forwarding PHP specifies the drop probability, one being the lowest and three being the highest. Finally, packets that are not covered by the combined tokens in the BC and BE buckets are violating and should be dropped. So I'm going to hit a question mark here and we have violate dash action. And of course we want to drop packets that are violating. Long command. Let's hit enter. All right, cool. That is it for the policer configuration. To apply it to gig 00, we need to implement a service policy. So let's get into interface configuration mode int gig 00 and we'll do a service dash policy input ingress policy, which is the name of our policy map. So this applies the policy map to traffic ingressing gig zero zero. That's what input means. Enter. Now, how do we test this out? Well, we need to generate some traffic. So let's go to switch one. Switch one, here we are. The easiest way to do this is, you guessed it, ping. I'm gonna issue the ping command and then we'll take just a few seconds to watch it. So let's do ping two zero zero one, repeat 1000. Size 14,000. Notice that the first couple dozen ICMP echo requests get a reply, but then suddenly the replies stop, but only for a moment. They pick back up again for a few seconds, and then again, no reply. This pattern repeats over and over and over again and indicates that policing is working. Those first echo requests are either conforming or exceeding, but once the tokens in the BC and BE buckets run out, the policer on R1 begins to drop those incoming ICMP packets. Once the buckets refill, the policer allows those packets to ingress R1 again. Now let's let this ping run for a couple minutes and then we'll jump back over to R1. To see how many packets are conforming, exceeding, and violating, you can do a do show policy dash map interface gig 00. Now we have 7,861 conforming packets, 1,139 exceeding packets, and 129 violating packets. Remember that conforming and exceeding packets are transmitted and only violating packets are dropped. Notice on the last line it gives us a bit rate for each color of packet. 
Policers act on a per packet basis, not on a per bit basis. So the conforming and exceeding rates combined are often going to be less than the CIR rather than right on it. Anyway, our policer is working great. Great job.